Okay, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, I'm glad to meet you all here. Although some of you are not available, okay, we shall still start the recording and uh, you can uh, listen to the recording at your convenience. Okay, uh, this week we shall cover um, sampling distribution uh, and the central limit theory. Uh, let me share my screen with you right now. Okay, um, I believe that you can see my screen right now. Uh, what I will do is I will go for the uh, lecture for this week using the PowerPoint in the uh, in our course account in our Canvas. Okay, right now. Let's open the PowerPoint to quickly go over it. And then as usual, we will uh, go over the, um, we'll, 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 we'll talk about the uh, homework assignments. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we talked about the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Um, the point to cover this chapter is to lay the foundation for inferential statistics. Um, we, our goal in the main thrust of statistic is to make uh, inferences about the population parameters. Population parameters are characters, characteristics about the population of which we are very interested. So we, we want to know what are these uh, parameters, their value and so forth. These parameters include population mean, population, standard deviation, and so forth. Now, here we have the sampling distribution of the sample mean, because in order to estimate the population parameters, we need to have a, an estimator. And uh, if we focus on the population mean, then sample mean will be the, uh, we call it unbiased estimate of the population mean. Um, but uh, theoretically, uh, you know, empirically, we can only take a small sample as compared with the population, which is almost infinitely large in its members. So we take a small the, uh, a, a sample, much smaller in the sample size, uh, to make inferences about the population. And but uh, in statistic, in order to uh, make statistical inference a bit, uh, possible, we need to take uh, many samples. Uh, theoretically, we take infinitely many samples. Um, almost infinitely many, okay, depending on the population size and sample size. Then, uh, then we do these uh, sampling uh, of uh, the same size of samples, we will be able to generate many sample means. If we construct a distribution for these sample means, we will get a sampling distribution. And that is what we talked about here, about the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Now the point is what kind of uh, distribution is this sample mean? Um, we shall see that through the central limit theorem in this chapter, or uh, the sampling distribution of sample mean will be able to be approximated by normal distribution and therefore, Mm, we can 
we can take the advantage of the all the nice features of the normal distribution to make uh, statistical inferences. Okay, so this is the big picture, and so let's move on and see the rest of the contents. Um, yeah, so we have the need of first sampling distribution. Now, we have sampling error. Uh, why there is error? Because um, we only we only look at the partial information. We only look at the uh, small, small, much smaller subset of the population, which we call a sample in estimating a population characteristic. So uh, undoubtedly, there are there are errors. And we call this error sampling error. Um, then sampling distribution of the sample mean is that for a variable x given sample size, distribution of x is called sampling distribution uh, of a sample mean. Okay. Yeah. Where this is a distribution about a sample mean. Okay, we, we, as mentioned before, we take the many, many uh, samples of the same size and from the, each of these samples, we get a sample mean. So we have a lot of sample means from different samples. So when we construct a histogram, they shall follow some kind of distribution. And uh, it's our goal to establish that it follows a normal distribution. So given this uh, data set, uh, we have A, B, C, D, E, and, uh, and, and each time we take two from this sample, we can get uh, uh, sample means for so, many, uh, for so many samples here. And then put them into a graph, we can find a mean. And then, if we do this all over again uh, with the uh, sample size three uh, and four, you can see that um, even five. So you can see that uh, mm, the center remains the same. The mean of the means remains the same from sample to sample from uh, uh, in these different scenarios, but uh, the uh, variability keep decreasing until it becomes uh, zero. So this is an interesting phenomenon that we, we shall take an advantage. And uh, another example will be, uh, okay, we'll see another example now. Here's a sample size for sampling and sampling error. Sample size now, uh, as you can see in, 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 in previous example, plays an important part as n increase, the variability decrease. So the variability must, uh, must affect the, the sample size must affect the variability. Okay. So let's move on to the next. Uh, here we see the section 7.2, the mean and standard deviation of the sample mean. And as you can see in the previous example, that given the sample size is different, and the mathematically we can prove it that um, it won't, the center will not change. Whatever the, um, whatever the population mean is, Regardless, uh, your your uh, repeated sampling, the mean of the all the means to to in all the samples will remain the same as the population mean. That's what it means. The standard deviation of the sample mean is uh, reduced reduced by the scale of uh, square root of n. In other words, if you take n as one, which is um, which is the population, you just take one as an example as a sample, then what you get is uh, eventually you exhaust all the possible options, different different n, different uh, sample size one, 
you get uh, the whole population. And so sigma doesn't change. Sigma over square root of n is sigma. If n equals to two, then the sample, the sampling, the, the standard error of the variable x bar if, uh, is uh, decreased by the scale of square root n. Okay, and uh, we call it sampling error. <clears throat> and the sampling distribution of the sample mean will be, uh, with this, we will be able to establish that it should be close to the normal distribution. Uh, here we see sample name for normal distribution family uh, variable. Suppose there are run a variable X of population is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then for samples of size n, the variable X bar is also normally distributed and has mean mu and standard deviation sigma over square root n. So uh, you may say if the parents are American, their children are American, using this analogy. If the population is uh, is um, normal, then the sample are also normal. Okay. Now uh, here we see that uh, um, from uh, different. Uh, okay. Here we see that uh, uh, if we increase the sample size n from four to sixteen, uh, and then and compare all their uh, distribution. So you can see the lab, uh, the first one is a population. The second one is sampling distribution of the sample mean with a smaller variability, but that's still the same center. And the third one is uh, even uh, smaller, I mean, more cent centralized uh, around the mean and, uh, and the peak. Okay. So the central central limit theorems is that says that um, for a relatively large sample size, usually n greater than or equal to thirty, the variable x bar is approximately normally distributed, regardless of the distribution of the variable under consideration. The approximating should becomes better than increasing, uh, better with increasing sample size. So this is kind of like. Um, pretty powerful statement, pretty powerful theory, which enables us to, to uh, use a normal approximation to any, any, any distribution, including the discrete probability distribution. And then the histogram of the sample size for 1,000 samples of 30 households is a superimposed normal curve. Yeah. So now we see that uh, uh, this kind of ap application, powerful application, is a central limit theorem uh, facilitate the our the transition from uh, from our uh, descriptive statistic to inferential statistic because main thrust of statistic is to make inferences about something we don't know, something which is of great interest to us. Okay, and if we look at the graph, and we shall see that the top row of the graph, and they are population distribution, they are from different shape, pretty different, but as gradually as we start to sample with the same size, at least two and so forth, uh, the, the, the distribution, <coughs> will start to start to centralize and uh, and when it's come to end uh, almost they almost look the same no more no more difference you you cannot tell the difference okay so this is central limit theorem okay so with that uh, we'll move on to the um, uh, assignments uh, remember now we are looking at the distribution of x bar no, is no longer x, and so uh, through through this is the assignment will give you a chance to practice uh, uh, the application of uh, central limit theorem. So here we have the. <coughs> uh, 
<coughs> essential amino acid here. Uh, chapter six. <clears throat> okay, so uh, central limit theorem. Here we see. Uh, here we see that the uh, uh, variable of the population is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So you choose one. Uh, so from the power point, you can see that the mean doesn't change, but uh, in the sampling distribution, sample mean, uh, what, for X bar, the uh, standard devi deviation has to be decreased by a, uh, uh, by a scale of what? One over square root n. So you know which answer is correct. Uh, a variable is, is normally distributed mean mu and with standard deviation uh, sigma for sample size n. Then, uh, and then this is to uh, test you the central mean theorem. Okay, so you will uh, you have no problem answer this this question. Uh, I uh, so I, I'll leave, leave this question to you because it's not uh, theoretical, not that challenge, not that challenging. For this question, I will view an example because so I don't have to go again to the calculation. So to find the uh, view and uh, find mu, then we you, you can see from what we learned before is the sum of the products of these three numbers, you will get mu. Okay, so that's exactly what I said. Then how do you find the sigma square? To find the sigma square, you need to use the formula uh, like this one, but you can, of course you can, uh, so, there is also another form for this sigma, um, but we will just use this one. So if you uh, open this in Excel, and uh, instead of doing this uh, manually, you do it uh, with Excel, then uh, create a third column where you uh, put the R x square in there. Mm, actually, the Actually, the uh, no, uh, the third column, which is uh, x minus mu. First, you calculate the mu, and then uh, create the third column is uh, x minus mu. Then uh, fourth column to square the difference of x and mu. And then the multiply the fourth column with the column where probability is, respectively, to get the fifth column where is the product of the uh, square of the difference of observation and the is min by uh, and the product of it with the probability. And take the sum of, of that the last column you created, uh, you will get the variance. Uh, now, what this is going to do, um, uh, previous steps. Okay, fine. If we have n equal to two, n equal to two, then yeah, then you have what? Um, you 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 have n equal to two, and uh, with the uh, here we can see you do it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you do it uh, with with repetition. That means uh, all the numbers can be repeated twice, twice. Mm. And uh, and then because they are independent, they can be consider independent, uh, so the probability will be like this, uh, the probability of zero, if you choose zero, then there's zero times zero, one, 
a quarter times a quarter becomes 0.0625 and so on and so forth. You can calculate the mean and the new probability and then do it again for the sample mean, which is a product of the mean, sum of the product of the mean to get the mean of sample mean. And yes, x bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. You can calculate and then you can see that uh, they are the same. And the, where the sample mean be the mm, an unbiased estimator of the a sample variance be an unbiased estimator of po uh, population variance, yes. And you do the same thing, do the, you can do this in Excel and we'll shall be able to verify that they are in a similar fashion. Okay, so with that, uh, yeah, uh, unbiased estimator means that they, they are close, they are the same. Uh, you see, 1.688. So with that, uh, oh, they are the same. So they're unbiased. There's no difference. That's what it means. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that's question three. In question four, uh, I will leave, leave this to you. The answer is in the PowerPoint. Five, uh, okay. Then the first one is also concept type of question because uh, um, mean of the sampling distribution, the sample mean is the same as population mean. And, uh, and the uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution sample mean is equal to the what population standard deviation divided by square root n uh, and then with this these numbers given the statement you are able to calculate them respectively now to calculate this probability then you can uh, do it like uh, here standardized to z and then you find the error to the right or to the left, uh, to the left, like what you see here. Or you can use uh, Excel function um, norm.dist, uh, okay, and then you do two point norm.dist, left parenthesis, and 2.86, comma, uh, mu x bar here, and then sigma x bar uh, with those two numbers, and break and comma one, which means cumulative and then right parenthesis minus norm this norm dot this left parenthesis 2.84 and then x bar and then sigma over square root n as and then comma one also cumulative so you have the 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 put uh, the the probability to the left of 2.86 in the uh, normally distributed uh, x bar distribution and then subtract the error to the level 2.84 uh, the difference will be the probability yeah okay uh, XC here XC means to the right so uh, do the same thing you can use table or you use uh, Excel uh, but then uh, Excel give you the cumulative so you have once you use norm that this to do find it you do one minus norm that this uh, left parenthesis and uh, 2.855 comma mu x bar comma uh, sigma x bar you plug that in uh, comma one and by parenthesis, you plug that in Excel, you will get the answers. Okay, if you change X, uh, N, then of course, sigma hex bar, great if you change and everything is done uh, different, uh, the result will change accordingly. So I will leave these answers to you for your calculation. <coughs> Let's also look at uh, an example here. Mm, the same way, you have to calculate mu x bar, which is the same as uh, mu given in the question. And then you will use the sigma and n given the question to calculate sigma x bar equal to sigma over square root n. Then, uh, uh, 
find uh, uh, Z. So Z, uh, what about uh, 10 point, less than 10 points. So use a uh, mu X bar and a sigma X bar, giving the credit, uh, you calculate it to calculate the area to the left of 10. And there will be, there will be it. Okay, I think uh, up to this point, you should uh, understand how to do it and you got the hang of it. So you uh, can now work on your homework question to, um, to consolidate, okay, what you understand into the uh, uh, questions, all right? Okay, and uh, I, if, if you have any question, don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, by now, you should also be doing the R uh, midterm assignment. Okay, um, I believe you have all the uh, instructions you need in the files that I've attached in there. So please don't hesitate to let me know uh, if you have any questions at any time. Uh, I'll be glad to help you and uh, so we can move on uh, in a good way, make uh, good progress through the course. Okay, uh, let me know when you have any questions. Okay, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I think it's a good point to stop, right? Have a great day and see you next time.